Hello, and welcome to The Investing Iguana, the show where we explore the wild and wonderful world of personal finance, investing, and retirement planning. I'm your host, Iggy, and today we're going to talk about the magnificent seven ways to trade the earnings season. Earnings season is the time when publicly traded companies report their quarterly financial results, and it can be a very exciting and profitable time for options traders. Options are contracts that give you the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a stock at a specified price and time. They can be used to speculate on the direction of the stock price, hedge against risk, or generate income. But trading options during earnings season is not for the faint of heart. It requires a lot of research, analysis, and strategy. You need to have a clear outlook for the stock price and volatility and choose the right option strategy that matches your risk-reward profile. In this video, we're going to look at seven option strategies that are commonly used during earnings season and how they work. We'll also look at some examples of how these strategies can be applied to real-life scenarios. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of how to trade options during earnings season and hopefully some ideas for your next trade. But before we dive in, please take a moment to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode of The Investing Iguana. We have a lot of great content coming your way, so stay tuned. All right, let's get started with our first strategy, the straddle. A straddle is a strategy that bets on volatility. You buy a call and a put option with the same strike price and expiration date, which means you're paying for both the right to buy and sell the stock at that price. This gives you unlimited profit potential if the stock moves significantly in either direction, but also limits your loss to the amount you paid for the options. A straddle is typically used when you expect a big price move due to an event like earnings, but you're not sure which way it will go. For example, let's say you're bullish on Tesla, TSLA, but you're not sure how the market will react to its earnings report. Tesla is trading at $800 per share, and you buy a call and a put option with a strike price of $800 and an expiration date in one month. Each option costs $50, so your total cost is $100 per share. If Tesla's earnings are positive and the stock jumps to $900 per share, your call option will be worth $100, $900 minus $800, while your put option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $100 minus $100 equals $0 per share. Not very exciting, right? But if Tesla's earnings are negative and the stock drops to $700 per share, your put option will be worth $100, $800 minus $700, while your call option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $100 minus $100 equals $0 per share. Again, no profit. However, if Tesla's earnings are very positive and the stock surges to $1,000 per share, your call option will be worth $200, $1,000 minus $800, while your put option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $200 minus $100 equals $100 per share. That's a 100% return on your investment. But if Tesla's earnings are very negative and the stock plunges to $600 per share, your put option will be worth $200, $800 minus $600, while your call option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $200 minus $100 equals $100 per share. That's also a 100% return on your investment. As you can see, a straddle can make money from extreme price movements in either direction, but it can also lose money if the stock doesn't move enough to cover the cost of the options. A straddle is a high-risk, high-reward strategy that requires a lot of volatility to work. That's why some traders prefer a cheaper alternative, the strangle. A strangle is a strategy that also bets on volatility but with lower costs. You buy a call and a put option with different strike prices, which means you're paying for the right to buy and sell the stock at different prices. This lowers your upfront cost, but also reduces your profit potential. A strangle is typically used when you expect a big price move due to an event like earnings, but you're not sure which way it will go, and you want to save some money on the options. 
For example, let's say you're bullish on Apple, AAPL, but you're not sure how the market will react to its earnings report. Apple is trading at $150 per share, and you buy a call option with a strike price of $160 and a put option with a strike price of $140, both with an expiration date in one month. Each option costs $10, so your total cost is $20 per share. If Apple's earnings are positive and the stock jumps to $170 per share, your call option will be worth $10, $170 minus $160, while your put option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $10 minus $20 equals minus $10 per share. You'll lose money. But if Apple's earnings are negative and the stock drops to $130 per share, your put option will be worth $10, $140 minus $130, while your call option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $10 minus $20 equals minus $10 per share. You'll also lose money. However, if Apple's earnings are very positive and the stock surges to $180 per share, your call option will be worth $20, $180 minus $160, while your put option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $20 minus $20 equals $0 per share. You'll break even. But if Apple's earnings are very negative and the stock plunges to $120 per share, your put option will be worth $20, $140 to $120, while your call option will expire worthless. Your profit will be $20 to $20 equals $0 per share. You'll also break even. As you can see, a strangle can save you some money on the options, but it also requires a bigger price move to make money. A strangle is a lower risk, lower reward strategy that still requires a lot of volatility to work. But what if you don't expect a lot of volatility? What if you think the stock price will stay within a certain range after earnings? Then you might want to try a different strategy, the iron condor. An iron condor is a strategy that bets on stability. You sell an OTM call and an OTM put while buying a further OTM call and put with a wider spread, which means you're collecting premium from selling options that are unlikely to be exercised, while hedging your risk by buying cheaper options that limit your loss. An iron condor is typically used when you expect the stock price to stay within a certain range after earnings, and you want to take advantage of the high implied volatility before earnings. For example, let's say you're neutral on Netflix, NFLX, and you think its earnings report won't have much impact on its stock price. Netflix is trading at $500 per share, and you sell a call option with a strike price of $520 and a put option with a strike price of $480, both with an expiration date in one week. You also buy a call option with a strike price of $540 and a put option with a strike price of $460, both with the same expiration date. You receive $15 for each option you sell and pay $5 for each option you buy, so your net credit is $20 per share. If Netflix's earnings are neutral and the stock stays between $480 and $520 per share, all of your options will expire worthless. Your profit will be the net credit of $20 per share. That's a 4% return on your investment in one week. But if Netflix's earnings are positive and the stock rises above $520 per share, your short call option will be in the money, IDM, and you'll have to buy back the stock at the market price or deliver it if assigned. Your long call option will also be IDM and offset some of your loss, but not all of it. Your maximum loss will occur when the stock reaches or exceeds $540 per share, which is the break-even point of your long call option. Your loss will be the difference between the strike prices of the calls minus the net credit, or $540 minus $520, $20 equals minus $0 per share. You'll break even. If Netflix's earnings are negative and the stock falls below $480 per share, your short put option will be IDM and you'll have to buy the stock at the strike price or pay the difference if assigned. Your long put option will also be IDM and offset some of your loss, but not all of it. 
Your maximum loss will occur when the stock reaches or falls below $460 per share, which is the break-even point of your long put option. Your loss will be the difference between the strike prices of the puts minus the net credit, or $480 minus $460, $20 equals minus $0 per share. You'll also break even. As you can see, an iron condor can make money from a stable stock price, but it can also lose money if the stock moves too much in either direction. An iron condor is a low-risk, low-reward strategy that benefits from decreased volatility. But what if you want to make money from a specific stock price? What if you think the stock will stay near a certain level after earnings? Then you might want to try another strategy, the butterfly spread. A butterfly spread is a strategy that bets on accuracy. You buy one call, or put, sell two calls, or puts, at a higher, lower, strike, and buy one more call, put, at an even higher, lower, strike, which means you're paying for the right to buy and sell the stock at different prices, while also collecting premium from selling two options at the same price. This creates a narrow profit zone around a specific strike price, but also limits your loss to the amount you paid for the options. A butterfly spread is typically used when you expect the stock price to stay near a specific level after earnings and you want to take advantage of the low cost of the options. For example, let's say you're bullish on Amazon, AMZN, and you think its earnings report will boost its stock price to around $3,500 per share. Amazon is trading at $3,400 per share, and you buy a call option with a strike price of $3,400 and another call option with a strike price of $3,600, both with an expiration date in one month. You also sell two call options with a strike price of $3,500, both with the same expiration date. You pay $100 for each option you buy and receive $50 for each option you sell, so your net cost is $100 per share. If Amazon's earnings are positive and the stock rises to exactly $3,500 per share, all of your options will expire IDM. Your long call options will be worth $100, $3,500 minus $3,400, and $0, $3,500 minus $3,600, while your short call options will be worth minus $0, $3,500 minus $3,500. Your profit will be the difference between the values of your long and short options minus the net cost, or $100 plus $0 minus minus $0 minus $0, $100 equals $100 per share. That's a 100% return on your investment. But if Amazon's earnings are positive and the stock rises above or below $3,500 per share, your profit will start to decrease. For example, if Amazon's earnings are very positive and the stock surges to $3,700 per share, your long call options will be worth $300, $3,700 minus $3,400, and $100, $3,700 minus $3,600, while your short call options will be worth minus $200, $3,700 minus $3,500. Your profit will be $300 plus $100 minus $200 minus minus $200, $100 equals minus $100 per share. You'll lose money. However, if Amazon's earnings are negative and the stock falls below $3,400 per share, all of your options will expire OTM and worthless. Your loss will be the net cost of $100 per share. As you can see, a butterfly spread can make money from a precise stock price, but it can also lose money if the stock moves too far away from that price. A butterfly spread is a low-risk, low-reward strategy that requires a lot of accuracy. But what if you want to make money from a gradual stock price movement? What if you think the stock will stabilize after earnings and trend in one direction? Then you might want to try another strategy, the earnings calendar spread. An earnings calendar spread is a strategy that bets on time decay. 
you buy a longer term call or put option while selling a short term call or put option with the same strike, which means you're paying for the right to buy or sell the stock at a later date, while also collecting premium from selling an option that expires sooner. This creates a positive theta, which means you benefit from the faster decay of the short term option. An earnings calendar spread is typically used when you expect the stock price to stabilize after earnings and trend in one direction over time, and you want to take advantage of the high implied volatility before earnings. For example, let's say you're bearish on Facebook, FB, and you think its earnings report will disappoint the market and cause its stock price to decline gradually. Facebook is trading at $300 per share, and you buy a put option with a strike price of $300 and an expiration date in three months. You also sell a put option with the same strike price but an expiration date in one week. You pay $30 for the long-term option and receive $10 for the short-term option, so your net cost is $20 per share. If Facebook's earnings are negative and the stock falls to $290 per share in one week, your short-term option will expire IDM and you'll have to buy back the stock at the strike price or deliver it if assigned. Your long-term option will also be IDM and increase in value, but not as much as your short-term option. Your loss will be the difference between the values of your long and short options minus the net cost, or $10 minus $20, $20 equals minus $30 per share. You'll lose money. But if Facebook's earnings are negative and the stock stays at $300 per share in one week, your short-term option will expire OTM and worthless. Your long-term option will also be OTM and decrease in value, but not as much as your short-term option. Your profit will be the difference between the values of your long and short options minus the net cost, or $0 minus $10, $20 equals minus $10 per share. You'll make some money. However, if Facebook's earnings are negative and the stock continues to fall to $280 per share in three months, your long-term option will expire IDM and be worth $20, $300 minus $280, while your short-term option will have expired worthless. Your profit will be the difference between the values of your long and short options minus the net cost, or $20 minus $0, $20 equals $0 per share you'll break even. But if Facebook's earnings are negative and the stock drops even further to $260 per share in three months, your long-term option will expire IDM and be worth $40, $300 minus $260, while your short-term option will have expired worthless. Your profit will be the difference between the values of your long and short options minus the net cost, or $40 minus $0, $20 equals $20 per share. That's a 100% return on your investment. As you can see, an earnings calendar spread can make money from a gradual stock price movement, but it can also lose money if the stock moves too fast or in the opposite direction. An earnings calendar spread is a medium risk, medium reward strategy that benefits from time decay. But what if you already own the stock and you want to generate some income from it? What if you think the stock price will rise moderately or stay flat after earnings? Then you might want to try another strategy, the covered call. A covered call is a strategy that bets on stability or modest growth. You sell call options against the stock you own, which means you're collecting premium from giving someone else the right to buy your stock at a specified price and time. This lowers your cost basis, increases your income, and reduces your downside risk. A covered call is typically used when you already own the stock and you expect it to rise moderately or stay flat after earnings, and you want to take advantage of the high implied volatility before earnings. For example, let's say you own 100 shares of Microsoft, MSFT, and you think its earnings report will be positive but not spectacular. Microsoft is trading at $250 per share, and you sell one call option with a strike price of $260 and an expiration date in one month. You receive $5 per share for the option, so your net credit is $500. If Microsoft's earnings are positive and the stock rises to $260 per share in one month, your option will expire IDM and you'll have to sell your stock at the strike price or deliver it if assigned. 
your profit will be the difference between the strike price and your cost basis plus the net credit, or $260 minus $250 plus $5 equals $15 per share. That's a 6% return on your investment. But if Microsoft's earnings are positive and the stock rises above $260 per share in one month, your option will expire IDM and you'll have to sell your stock at the strike price or deliver it if assigned. Your profit will be capped at $15 per share, even if the stock goes higher. You'll miss out on any additional upside. However, if Microsoft's earnings are negative and the stock falls below $250 per share in one month, your option will expire OTM and worthless. Your loss will be reduced by the net credit, or $250 minus $5, $250 equals minus $5 per share. That's a 2% loss on your investment. But if Microsoft's earnings are very negative and the stock plunges to $240 per share in one month, your option will expire OTM and worthless. Your loss will be the difference between your cost basis and the stock price plus the net credit, or $250 minus $240, $5 equals minus $5 per share. That's also a 2% loss on your investment. As you can see, a covered call can generate income from a stable or moderately rising stock price, but it can also limit your upside potential and expose you to downside risk. A covered call is a low-risk, low-reward strategy that benefits from high implied volatility. But what if you don't own the stock and you want to sell options instead of buying them? What if you think the stock price will fall moderately or stay flat after earnings? Then you might want to try another strategy, the naked put. A naked put is a strategy that bets on stability or modest decline. You sell put options without owning the stock, which means you're collecting premium from giving someone else the right to sell you their stock at a specified price and time. This lowers your entry price, increases your income, and reduces your downside risk. A naked put is typically used when you don't own the stock, but you're interested in buying it at a lower price after earnings, and you want to take advantage of the high implied volatility before earnings. For example, let's say you're bullish on Google, GOOG, and you think its earnings report will be positive, but not spectacular. Google is trading at $2,000 per share, and you sell one put option with a strike price of $1,900 and an expiration date in one month. You receive $50 per share for the option, so your net credit is $5,000. If Google's earnings are positive and the stock rises above $1,900 per share in one month, your option will expire OTM and worthless. Your profit will be the net credit of $5,000. That's a 2.6% return on your investment. But if Google's earnings are positive and the stock falls below $1,900 per share in one month, your option will expire IDM and you'll have to buy the stock at the strike price or pay the difference if assigned. Your loss will be the difference between the strike price and the stock price minus the net credit, or $1,900 minus $X, $50 per share, where X is the current stock price. Your break-even point will be $1,850 per share, which is the strike price minus the net credit. However, if Google's earnings are negative and the stock falls significantly below $1,900 per share in one month, your option will expire IDM and you'll have to buy the stock at the strike price or pay the difference if assigned. Your loss will be the difference between the strike price and the stock price minus the net credit, or $1,900 minus $X, $50 per share, where X is the current stock price. Your loss will be unlimited if the stock goes to zero. As you can see, a naked put can generate income from a stable or moderately falling stock price, but it can also expose you to unlimited downside risk if the stock drops sharply. A naked put is a high-risk, high-reward strategy that benefits from high implied volatility. And that concludes our list of the magnificent seven ways to trade the earnings season. I hope you learned something new and useful from this video, and I hope you'll try some of these strategies in your own trading. Remember, options trading involves risk and is not suitable for everyone. Always do your own research and analysis before making any trading decisions. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, 
share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode of The Investing Iguana. We have a lot of great content coming your way, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and happy trading!